been a piece uh, a few years ago, but I, I don't have it or haven't seen it. But yes, he did. So, <clears throat> what what was your next uh, service with with Senator Dole? Well, um, the the next thing that happened was. Um, uh, of course, I had uh, decided not to run for re-election, and uh, the next thing that happened, of course, was a presidential race. And um, uh, he suggested to me that uh, he was going to be for Gerald Ford and ask if I wanted to be a part of that campaign. And so, um, I, I, I like the I like the action of a political campaign, and I, I said yes. So, in the primary. I was the Midwest Regional Chairman for the President Ford campaign at the suggestion and request of Bob Dole. And I had several states here in the Midwest, Kansas, Missouri, and Iowa, Nebraska, and North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota, I think. And that was when I first um, uh, got involved in presidential politics. And I, I managed that part of the campaign through the primary process. and. And uh, at, the, at the same time, I was um, um, elected a, a delegate to the national uh, convention, uh, which was held in Kansas City. And that was uh, the first time that the uh, moderate conservative factions in Kansas came head to head in uh, an important race because there was a large contingent of the Kansas Republicans for Ronald Reagan. And the moderate part of the party, which included Dole, myself, and most of our organization, were for uh, Gerald Ford. And a lot of that was because Bob Dole was for Gerald Ford. And we went to the Kansas convention, and it was very, very tight. And I think that really came down again to the organization that we had in place. The Reagan forces were very vocal. and and uh, out in force, but we were much, much better organized through that uh, state convention process, and we prevailed. And so we went to the Kansas, um, uh, we came out of that convention with, uh, I believe, if memory serves me, 32 of 34 votes for Ford, and only we managed to let the Reagan forces win only two. I may have my numbers a little off, it's been a long time, but it was pretty much like that. And so having, having served as Ford's Midwest Regional uh, Chairman and then as, a, as a, a delegate to the convention myself, I was elected at that state convention, um, we went to the, uh, to the national convention here in Kansas City. And uh, again, Bob, got me kind of in a good spot in the in the convention. Uh, Bob Griffin from Michigan was the floor manager for the Ford campaign. And the Kansas delegation uh, uh, had the front row seat at that convention. We were right in the front row right under the podium. And so Bob arranged for me to be Bob Griffin's assistant in the floor manager in that, in that uh, convention. And so Bob Griffin and I sat right on the front row of the Kansas delegation so he could keep an eye on the floor and see what was going on and also be there so he could be very close to the podium if needed. And as uh, in that position, it afforded me the opportunity to really be on the inside of what was going on in the Ford campaign when it came to picking uh, the vice presidential candidate, because I, I went to some of those meetings with uh, with uh, Bob Senator Griffin, and heard some of the conversations, and after a time or two, it became clear to me that nobody really had made up their mind who who ought to be the vice president. I mean, Howard Baker was being talked about, uh, John Connolly was being talked about. Um, other names which are escaping me at the moment, but there was no clear consensus. And so I went back to the Kansas delegation and I said, you know, we don't have anything else to do here. Let's do something that's fun. Why don't we see if we can help uh, move Bob Dole's case along to be a uh, potential vice presidential candidate? So our strategy was pretty simple. We split the whole country up, the states up, the different people in that 32 people that were the Ford people, 
and in twos we would go to the um, to the delegations of these other states and people we knew and we'd say hey we know you're for John Connolly but if Connolly doesn't win it on the first ballot would you be for Dole or if Baker isn't on it would you be for Dole or um, you know what Richard Kleindeast I think maybe was another one and um, <clears throat> So that was our strategy, and we just did that systematically, and, and we would get them their commitment. Yeah, if we don't, Conley doesn't get it, we'll vote for Dole. It was just like that easy. So as it got down to the end, um, I could tell that we were making some progress because when the Ford people would run the traps in these various states, they were getting back the feedback that I we had hoped would happen and that was well we're for Baker but we also kind of like Dole and Dole's name was always getting mentioned and uh, when it really got down to it uh, I think Dole in his own mind thinks that uh, he got um, he tried to stay real tight with Lynn Knopfsiger and the Reagan campaign and uh, probably thinks that it was uh, you know the Reagan campaign that, that made the suggestion in the final analysis who knows but I know that what we did sure didn't hurt anything because President Ford even mentioned to me after the fact that he was surprised at how many people were talking about Bob Dole when they were polling those states so in any event uh, when, it, when it all came out in the wash Bob Dole got selected. What do you think was the Reagan strategy there? I think, I think the Reagan uh, folks going into it thought they were gonna Win that, win that nomination. I mean, I, I think they thought just the power of Ronald Reagan's personality was going to save the day, as opposed to uh, to Ford, and that the pardon of Nixon would be the the tripping block that would make it happen. And it it just didn't. But. They're supporting Dole as the VP nominee. What was behind that? Do you think? Well, I don't think there was anything. I don't think I don't think they had any strategy on that subject at all. It was more Dole trying to get Nofziger to tell Reagan, if Ford ever asked you who you would select, would you mention my name? I think it was that simple. So then, were you involved in the campaign? Well, as it happened after the, the night that uh, Dole was uh, elected. Er, appointed to selected, run, selected and, and to, and then to, was be, elected. To, to be vice president uh, there was a there was a doorway under the under the podium that went right back under the podium and after after he won I was sitting on the front and uh, Senator Griffin and I just walked through that that doorway back there and talked to Dole then and and I had known Stu Spencer going back years before when he was involved in a state governor's campaign here in in Kansas for a Republican candidate Rick Harmon and it turns out that Stu Spencer uh, who had worked on Reagan's governor's campaign but at this point was uh, running uh, President Ford's campaign uh, he then became aware of how close I was to Dole, the fact that I'd worked on Ford's campaign uh, in the primary. I went back to Washington shortly after the race and walked into uh, Dole's office and Stu Spencer came in and we just all three went into Dole's office and it was almost, uh, well we kind of, Spencer kind of went through a scenario like this, well, you know, we're, we got to get this campaign started. Somebody's got to run your end of it. Dave here knows you. He's worked on the Ford campaign. Why don't we make him the, the chairman of the vice presidential campaign? Now, whether Dole really wanted to do that or not, I don't know, but that's, that's how it came out. And so I took over his end of the campaign in the general election of the, of the 76 race big responsibility. It was a big responsibility and um, uh, the very first thing uh, that happened was uh, uh, Ford went with Dole to Russell and I went to and then Dole went from there on to Seattle I believe it was to speak to the uh, American Legion or the VFW I can't remember as his first official act of of the campaign and President Ford went to Vail for strategy meetings and I went to Vail 
to represent Dole in those initial strategy meetings. Somewhere I've got some notes of, of those meetings and uh, the, the one I remember so vividly, uh, we were in President Ford's condominium there in Vail and the other people in attendance were my son, was in, in addition to me, were John Connolly, uh, Nelson Rockefeller, uh, Alan Greenspan, Dick Cheney, um, and I think Don Rumsfeld, but I can't remember for sure. But um, it was at that meeting that the strategy began uh, for how the, the campaign was going to be run. And I remember one interesting thing, I even made notes of it at the time, that Nelson Rockefeller turned to um, President Ford and he said, Mr. President, I would highly suggest that you start building up America's oil reserves because the Shah of Iran is not going to last long. And we depend on that for so much of our oil supplies. And little did anybody know how all of that would unfold over the years, but he was right on. And um, so Dole then arrived in Vail and there was a press conference um, and President Ford was answering questions and the subject got off on uh, the potential debates. And President Ford said yes, he intended to debate Ronald Reagan. And, and somebody asked uh, in the audience, just asked um, Dole, says, do you intend to, to debate Walter Mondale? And Dole just said, well, I'll debate him anytime, anywhere or something. I mean, it just all of a sudden, he was in it, whether he wanted to be or not. And so I just immediately went to Stu Spencer and I said, Stu, you are making, if we let this happen, this is a disaster. I mean, he is not going to do well in these kind of debates and I want to get you the proof. And I got a, I got a uh, can of film of that Hutch debate and I gave it to Stu and I said, watch this. You don't want this to happen. And um, so eventually, um, uh, you know, the campaign went on and uh, I became the point man to negotiate the debate rules with Walter Mondale and my, my two compadres in that were Senator Jacob Javits and Ted Stevens. And so we set out to establish the ground rules of the debate between the two. Uh, Dick Moe, as I recall, was on the other side of that. He was um, uh, Mondale's chief of staff, I think, and um, uh, a guy who ended up being a big pollster in the Democrat Party, whose name escapes me right now, were on the other side. But uh, I finally convinced Ted Stevens and, and Jacob Javits that this wasn't a good idea and we ought to try to get this torpedoed if we could and so we became very difficult to deal with uh, and we would agree to things and change our mind and, and you know do whatever we could do and um, but eventually the debate took place and it took place in Houston and um, it would go down in history I suppose in that election that as he got toward the end of the debate uh, uh, Dole made a comment about uh, that the Democrats had started all the wars or something to that effect. I can't remember the exact language. And it became another big, big issue just like the abortion issue became in the, in the Kansas um, Senate campaign. Um, the campaign itself uh, was, um, was pretty chaotic. Um, on the on the Dole side because Dole was still trying to um, stay close to Reagan and so here's Reagan defeated by Ford and all of a sudden all of these guys started coming on our campaign the Bob Dole for vice president campaign from the Reagan camp and it just so I had uh, I had Larry Speaks who had come over from uh, the White House to be uh, the head of our um, communications. Uh, we had uh, advanced guys uh, from the White House uh, on our staff and then we had all of these Reagan people that came in like Lynn Nofziger and Charlie Black and um, uh, Paul Russo and um, I, I can't remember them all but it, w it wasn't an easy, it was not a good situation in terms of people mixing together and working for a common cause and so there was a lot of dissension and I would have to say that uh, one of Dole's uh, weaknesses is he, 
he doesn't really, he, he's always looking for another angle. He, he will never give people the kind of support they need to really run something effectively. And so, you know, Lynn Knopfsiger was always trying to undermine me in the running of the campaign, and um, Dole wouldn't take a position, and it, it, it just got to be a mess, frankly. Um, but uh, we got through it and got to the end of it, and on election day, if there had been a few more votes in Ohio and Hawaii, Ford would have been elected. What was your position relative to uh, Stu Spencer, is it? Or Stu Spencer? Mm -hmm. was well, uh, Stu, uh, of course, and I had been had met each other back in uh, probably 1968 in Kansas when, or excuse me, before that, like 64, 66 maybe when uh, he was working on Rick Carmen's campaign in Kansas. But it was really Stu that I worked with when I was um, uh, working as a regional chairman for the Ford campaign in the primary. He was in charge. He was a guy I reported to. And so that's why he was so quick to suggest that I be the guy, and because I was one of the few people in captivity that knew Dole that well and had been working on the Ford campaign. So he was the one who suggested that um, uh, that I take that role and, and supported me in that. So he stayed with the Ford side. He but... stayed with the Ford campaign, correct. Do you, <clears throat> did Dole ever express to you regrets for having made the Democrat war comment? No, I've never heard him. Never heard him say that. <clears throat> this is this is fascinating stuff. You're a real eyewitness to history here, or a player, of course.